What's going on sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer and today I do want to talk to you about two carbs that are really making a negative impact on your diet. Now these aren't carbs that you necessarily have to 100% keep out of the equation, but I do want you to make a concerted effort to truly try to limit them as much as possible. Okay, when it comes down to intermittent fasting especially, it's very, very important that the types of carbohydrates you consume are in line with what you're trying to achieve. So I want to give you sort of the rule book when it comes down to carbohydrates. And as always, you can check out my science-based six-pack program in the description below. Let's get right down to the facts though. The first carbohydrate that I want you to be a little bit weary of is actually going to be anything that contains gluten in it. Now, before you shut me out, I want you to listen to me completely because I'm not anti-gluten. See, gluten isn't necessarily bad it's how our bodies now respond to it. Our bodies didn't always respond to gluten in a negative way, but now they do because gluten has been altered so much. Now, I'm not just coming at you with some hippy dippy stuff saying that gluten is bad because it's trendy. There's some legitimate science and legitimate facts that truly back up what I'm saying. When it comes down to making bread or when it comes down to making dough, anything that requires gluten, gluten is the structure. It's the protein that allows it to be firm, allows it to have some structure so it holds together. You know, you've got your yeast, you've got your flour, you've got your water, and then you've got the gluten that's in the equation to actually give it structure. Well, that same structure is also taking place in your gut, and that structure is hard to break down. So when you consume gluten, it does something sort of like a paper cut does at a very micro level inside your intestinal tract. Now, it's not like your gut is bleeding or anything like that, but what ends up happening is you end up having these micro traumas, these micro fissures that are happening in your gut. And when that happens, it triggers inflammation. It triggers your immune system to attack that area because you're having a response. Okay, just like when you cut your hand or you have a paper cut, it gets a little swollen, it gets a little painful because the inflammation response is going there. Well, when the inflammatory response triggers in your intestinal tract, it can be very, very detrimental as far as your fitness goals are concerned. It's not that gluten literally goes in and cuts up your intestines or anything like that. It has to do with something known as an amylase trypsin inhibitor, which is a compound that is now in gluten. And it's a result of gluten being manufactured, or wheat being manufactured, I should say, in a more pest-resistant kind of way. So these amylase trypsin inhibitors trigger the immune response, and it's the immune response that actually responds even more to the microtraumas that are occurring in your gut. Now, what does this lead to? This leads to something known as intestinal permeability. So a lot of us might think that we want the intestines to be more permeable. We want the intestines to absorb more, and we do but we don't want them to absorb big chunks of food or big chunks of nutrients. So when we have intestinal permeability, the intestines open up more, and that means that bigger chunks of food can get in. Well, our bodies aren't designed to break down those big chunks or those big molecules. They're designed to break down small, micronized forms of food. If you've ever seen a lot of supplement advertisements, you'll notice that they're always talking about the micronization or how they can get something very, very fine or small in order to be absorbed. Well, it's exactly just that. The smaller the particle, the easier it is to absorb. So when we're absorbing larger particles, it's very hard to assimilate and utilize that food, but it also triggers an immune response that slows down your results and also makes you a lot more fatigued. It's called chronic inflammation, and we don't want that. Now, to make matters unfortunately worse, gluten contains a particular strand of protein known as zonulin. Okay, it's known as a prolamin, and what this prolamin named zonulin does is it triggers more intestinal permeability. Zonulin isn't shown to trigger more inflammation, but it causes the junctions between the cell and the gut to become looser which therefore makes the intestines even more permeable. So you have kind of two things that are causing intestinal permeability. You've got inflammation, and then you've got the effect of that prolamin known as zonulin, which I don't have to go into exquisite detail about right now. All we have to know is that it's bad. Now, when it comes down to how this affects your mood and your brain, it's a whole other story. You see, you actually do get a level of neuroinflammation and brain inflammation that occurs from consuming gluten as well. And it's simply because this stretching or this expanding of the actual intestinal permeability causes something known as a lipopolysaccharide to get into the bloodstream. While this lipopolysaccharide reacts with other things in the body and creates a very toxic environment, which actually triggers systemic inflammation. This systemic inflammation, where it triggers things like interleukin-1 and interleukin-6, can cause this major bout of inflammation that can actually cross through the blood brain barrier and cause some neurodegenerative effects and also neuroinflammation. So it doesn't just affect your body, it does affect your mind. Okay, let's talk about the second carb you need to avoid. Now, this may sound like total common sense at first. It might sound like first grade, avoid this. But the problem is that it's in just about every food that we really think is tasty. If you go to the freezer section and you look at a lot of foods, it's gonna be there. And you have to understand well, what is in it. And it's known as high fructose corn syrup. And at first, it sounds like it's just taboo, right? 
But you have to understand, a lot of people will say that high fructose corn syrup isn't that bad simply because it's cornstarch. It's derived from cornstarch, and they just basically make a sugar or a syrup from cornstarch. Well, cornstarch would create glucose. It's the fact that they actually try to create fructose from glucose. And how they do that is they add specific enzymes. These enzymes that they add are known as alpha amylase and glucoamylase. And these are totally genetically modified enzymes that are designed to be heat tolerant. And what these enzymes do that are heat tolerant is they, in a way, go through and they make the glucose into fructose, something we don't want. Fructose is metabolized totally differently by the body. Fructose converts into fat much easier. You see, when we consume fructose, we have a system in our body known as the active transport chain that creates free fatty acids and triglycerides from fructose. Well, therefore, we have this conversion that happens right into stored body fat significantly easier. Now, the other problem we have to look at is high fructose corn syrup is so darn potent that our body cannot handle it at one point in time. So this high fructose corn syrup serves as this thing that sort of shuts the body down and makes it so that it can't utilize all that glucose and fructose. It's a big problem and it causes us to store a lot more fat than we would if we were just consuming regular carbohydrates like straight up glucose. So what can you really do? Well, the only thing you can do there is just be aware, okay? Because you're not gonna change the fact that fructose is metabolized totally different in the body. You just need to look at the label and make sure you're really, really consuming what you want to be consuming. And when you're breaking a fast, the last thing you wanna be consuming is fructose because that's gonna go straight to storage after you've been working this entire time to make it so that you lose weight and lose fat. Now I'm gonna end with one more note. Fructose does not affect your ghrelin levels. What does that mean? It never satiates you. It has no effect on satiation. You can eat lots and lots and lots of fructose or high fructose corn syrup, and you're probably gonna find that you're still hungry because it doesn't trigger the ghrelin response like other carbohydrates or other fats and protein do. As always, my friends, make sure you keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com. If you have ideas for future videos, let me know. But again, if you want my full protocol on intermittent fasting, check out the link in the description and you can get started. I'll see you there.